By the way, I just plopped in your porch. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you've not been here before, my name's Sarah. I make videos about outdoors, adventures, mainly in Wales, sometimes in Scotland, sometimes further afield. And I do a lot of solo wild camping. So camping out in the wilderness completely on my own. Something that I get asked all the time is, don't you get scared when you're on your own? The short answer to that is, yup. Yup, yes! Sometimes I do still get scared, but it's so much less than it used to be. And that's partly because I've done it so many times now, but it's also because of the things that I've learned. So I wanted to make this video today to help you crush the fear demons, rip them to shreds, smash them to little bits and squeeze them inside out. Squeeze them inside out? by giving you some juicy tips straight out of my brain to hopefully help you get over some of the fear. The thing with wild camping alone is that even if you're used to wild camping with other people, so you've been with friends before, being on your own is different. So you might need to do things differently or think about things differently, especially if you're a little bit nervous. So much of our anxiety actually comes from uncertainty. So considering a few things before you go can actually help take away some of that uncertainty. Practice. One thing that can be really useful is to go and camp on an actual campsite on your own first. Now I actually did this, I think I might have already wild camped before I went. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had, but I went for this amazing trip down to Cornwall on my own. I feel like I've just said on my own like 60 times in a row. Do you want to say on your own one more time, Sarah? But I actually toured a load of campsites in Cornwall on, on my own. There we go again. How do I say on my own without saying on my own? Alone? Solo, clues in the title of the video. But that actually helps you to really get into the routines of camping and just knowing how to be on your own, which I think is like a big part of it. Location, location, location. I think it's worth considering camping somewhere that you've been before, even eyeing up your spot beforehand. That way you'll know a little bit about the area before you go. If it's somewhere you've camped before, maybe with friends, then that's even better because you'll have an idea of whether it's a popular spot or not. Personally, I tend to try and avoid the popular spots when I'm wild camping on my own just because I don't want other wild campers or eager beaver sunrise hikers traipsing past my tent freaking me out. Darkness. Darkness can be a really big one for some people. It's different being on your own in the dark than it is with other people, so I've got two things for this. Firstly, you could try going for walks on your own in the dark just to get used to it. And secondly, this one's a really good tip. Plan to do your camp on a full moon. It might sound weird and you might already be thinking of werewolves, but don't. If it's a clear sky, oh, that's the other part. It needs to be a clear sky. Pointless having a bloody full moon if it's like... <laughs> Pointless having a full moon if it's like... 25 million foot of cloud plan it for a clear night with a full moon especially in like summer because it's pretty much light like i've done wild camps in the brecon beacons with a full moon on a clear night and i can step out my tent and i don't even need a torch so it kind of completely takes that dark fear part of it away so that's a re that's actually a really good tip that's that is like that is like a juicy money tip. Like why did I think that was just an extra like crappy one? That's actually really that is a good one. What if I hate it? If this is you and it's your first ever solo wild camp, then it's a really legitimate consideration. I've had nights where I have been quite scared and I have thought to myself I could just leave right now but then I know I'm so far away from where I park that it's just easier to stay where I am, which also does work in my favor at times, but it depends how you want to play it. It might be better for you in the beginning to say, I'm going to be nearer my car so that I can leave if I want to, rather than forcing yourself to have to stay out all night shit in your pants. Whoa! Okay, you're going to have to bear with me now because I've been messing around in After Effects and I came up with this idea that whilst I'm moving to the next location, I'd pretend that I'm a mini Sarah and I'm packed in the tent into the backpack and Big Sarah is currently carrying it. So that's what's going on right now in case my After Effects skills are not what I thought. 
So I thought I would tell you, whilst Big Sarah carries me along, about my first experience of wild camping. My first wild camp was in some sand dunes behind a beach because I had this thing in my head that I wanted to see the sunrise in the morning over the sea. Um, <laughs> turns out I was actually facing west so I wasn't even going to see the sunrise over the sea because it rises from the east but let's not go there. Um, I didn't really think about camping somewhere when like no one was going to go. For those who know South Wales my first wild camp was in Merthamau sand dunes and it's a really vast area and whoa Jesus Sarah I could have found somewhere that was pretty off-grid and that worked but I didn't really think about it and basically there's a car park which is how do I put this known for having a lot of like boy racers um, into the night and also <coughs> doggers um, <laughs> it wasn't the best idea and I just didn't really think about these things, which maybe is a good thing, but I mean, I didn't sleep an actual wink, so clearly it wasn't a good thing. <sighs> okay, so you've come out, you've beat the anxiety so far, you've picked your spot, you're on location, you're geared up and ready for this. What are you gonna do next? First thing I would definitely recommend once you've got your tent up and stuff, look around you and look at all the features in your area. And what you're looking for is anything that when you get out of your tent for your 900p could look like a, an ax murderer. And then what you can do is when you do get out and see it, you can fling it the V. Think Macaulay Culkin in um, Home Alone, when he goes into the basement and tells that furnace thing to shut up. This sounds a bit ridiculous, but honestly, so many times it has really helped me. Just even things like little bushes, that if you haven't spotted them in the light you're so much more sensitive to it once it's gone dark that it can then freak you out pretend it's like midnight oh well i've had loads of sleep so far because um i watched this video with this girl called sarah talking about solo wild camping and it really helped me Psst, tell all your friends hint hint oh i just i just need a pee at the moment I'm just gonna, ha 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 ha, sticky dude. I know you're just a stick, not like a big snake or something. Um, do you mind? So let's start talking about once you're in your tent. It can be really good to have some stuff to focus on. Make it like a whole cozy little experience. So I used to, and occasionally still do, bring out battery powered fairy lights. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it makes it into a proper cozy little cocoon. It depends how discreet you wanna be, but like my tent is like light gray anyway, so it's not hiding from anyone, let's be real. So that's one thing. Some people choose to bring a book. Some people bring headphones to listen to music. I find having a camera really good and like vlogging, even if I'm not gonna do anything with it, I find having the camera just gives me the confidence and also because if something does go tits up or like is a bit ridiculous or funny, it'll just make a good video. So um, you could focus on like wanting to get photos of the stars, make a little routine, have a hot chocolate, have a little snack. I'm a massive fan of a snack. Not sure if you've ever noticed that before, if you've watched my videos and just get your kit into like little places around the tent. So like, let's look behind me now, for instance. What have we got in here? Oh look, snacks. Everyone loves a nut. Not sponsored by Green and Black's, but um, Green and Black's dark chocolate, the 85% variety. Love this stuff. By the way, those people that are like, oh, you should get dark chocolate because like you'll only eat like two squares. Yeah, let's see how that one goes for you. Bullshit. Just focus on whatever you need to focus on that you're excited about. So be excited about your hot chocolate, be excited about the sunrise in the morning, unless it's pissing down, in which case not. Be excited about your coffee that you're gonna have in the morning. There is nothing wrong with focusing on food. I'm just gonna put that out there. Actual real life sound effects. Thank you, birdie. So this is probably, I should have got to this earlier in the video, but I got a bit of a structure. So let's just, we are where we are. So you need to know firstly that your tent is going to make a lot of noises. And secondly, still baffles me to this day how much those noises can sound like something munching the grass close to your tent or like a person close to your tent but if you know this then it can really help to settle you when you do hear little rustling noises and it can seem really obvious that your tent's going to rustle like when it's windy but actually i find the worst time is when it's like a tiny bit breezy 
because you don't then put it down to your tent. When it's a little bit breezy, you get that little bit of, that tiny little bit of rubbing that sounds so much like there's someone there, it's unreal. Just keep that in mind and it will save you hours of being scared. I'm just an innocent little sheep eating grass and rubbing my ass against your tent. I have no idea. I have no idea that you're shitting yourself inside there because I sound like a massive monster or a demon outside. If you just came out, you'd know that I'm just a little innocent sheep minding my own business. Come out and say hi. By the way, I just plopped in your porch. So enjoy that stuck on your socks when you go out for a pee after. Animals fighting or having sex is the worst. Humping hedgehogs and fighting foxes literally is the scariest thing I've ever heard. But again, once you know it's that, it's actually quite funny. Do a little YouTube search. There's bound to be videos out there. I had no idea before I started wild camping on my own. Enjoy that because it's insane and funny in the day. Not funny when you're in a tent on your own at night. You're welcome. Right, let's get, let's get casual. Make it look like this is comfy now, come on. <laughs> Jack, paint me like one of your French girls. I can't sit like that. The last class of noises that I want to talk about is people walking. Firstly, is it someone actually walking? Because we've already established that a rustling tent has a habit of sounding a bit like Freddy Krueger. Maybe don't think about Freddy Krueger if you're going to go out solo while camping, but yeah, let's move on. If you're in the mountains, it is so unlikely to be something you need to worry about. I pretty much guarantee that they're just like you. So depending on what time it is, they're either looking for a camping spot as well, they're going out for a sunrise hike, or they're going out to do some night photography. They love the mountains as much as you... As you they love the mountains as much as you... Why can't I say that? <laughs> they love the mountains as much as you do. And they're just there in the same way you are just to enjoy the outdoors so please don't worry about it and to be honest the only time i've ever had someone walking past my tent is when i've camped in questionable places so one that springs to mind right now is another beach camp and i wasn't in a particularly conspicuous spot to be honest and all night i had like two or three fishermen walking back and forth past my tent because apparently night time is the time to fish i didn't know that i do know that now but it actually wasn't scary at all because i could hear them really loudly talking about corned beef pasties for most of the nights it was more annoying than anything because i couldn't sleep but to be fair i was totally on their territory so i can't blame them i found a little den for this bit another couple of really significant things that are definitely worth noting are that sound carries a really long way so even if it sounds like somebody or something is near your tent it's probably not it's probably a lot further away than it sounds definitely bear that in mind and the other thing is you know that saying about animals being more scared of you than you are of them well that kind of applies to when you're in your tent people don't know who is inside there in the same way that you don't know who is outside the tent they could be as scared as you are i just always bear in mind that if i think i hear someone walking in my tent they don't know whether i'm me or whether I'm a 15 stone, six and a half foot lump of muscle that could absolutely batter them to pieces. And I know we kind of shouldn't have to think of things like that, but it does really help. Here comes Stig of a Dump. Stung my butt on a nettle in there as well, didn't I? We've just established that the noises are nothing to worry about. So do you know what? I've learned over the years that it's just better not to hear them. Whether you use earplugs or headphones or you go with the good old fashioned the full cocoon. Honestly, I've had so many good nights of sleep inside the cocoon. Also, I told you this chocolate didn't last. I've literally just ate the last half of it whilst I've been filming this. Now you don't know if I'm an absolute gannet or if these things take me ages to film. I'll give you a clue. It's both. Well, I say nice. I'm actually camped on an ancient burial ground and there is actually bones sticking out of the, um, like where the side is like falling away wish me luck on sleeping nah i'll be fine to be honest i prefer the dead people like i'd be more concerned if there was alive people walking around here third concern which is my main concern actually is that they're looking for some kind of like mass murderer 
who's escaped from some prison and has run up the mountains. And uh, little old me is by you in my freaking tent. You've done as much as you can to try and not be scared, but it's happened anyway. You're lying in your tent and you're absolutely papping your pants. Sometimes my logic tells me that if I think there's a murderer out there, I may as well just get out and look. Because once I see that there isn't, I know I can go to sleep. If there is one out there, well, they're gonna get me anyway. I have even done a game where every time I think of something scary or I get a bit scared, I have to get up, get out and do a lap of the tent. Oh my God, there's a killer sheep outside. Out. The final thing that you can do when you're scared, and this is the secret weapon, the absolute mother of tips in my opinion, is to deploy the logical brain. I find the best way to do this is to talk to myself as if, maybe in my head, not out loud, as if I'm a coach, so take myself out of myself. Sometimes I even visualise the tent as if I'm looking at it from the outside, and then coach me asks real me a series of questions to help deploy that logic. Okay, real Sarah, what's the problem? Well, I'm lying in my tent and I'm absolutely shitting myself because I can hear something outside and I'm convinced it's a murderer coming to get me. Okay, real Sarah, whereabouts are you? Well, coach, I'm camping in the Brecon Beacons. Right, okay, real Sarah, when is the last time that you heard about a murderer being on the loose in the Brecon Beacons? Um... Uh... Never. Right, okay, so do we think we might be overreacting a little bit here? Maybe, but I am still really scared. Okay then, real Sarah, what's the alternative? Are you gonna pack up all your stuff now and have to walk out past the scary murderer? Or are you just gonna lie down and go to sleep? Because regardless of whether there's a murderer out there or not, you only have two options. You either pack up and go, or you just go to sleep. I suppose you have a third option. You could lie here all night and just be scared. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. I might just, I might just go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. I really hope you've enjoyed this video today and more importantly, got something useful out of it. If you have, please share it with other people who might also find it useful. That's also the best way that you can support my channel. So I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.